a schoolboy led a mob of teenage thugs in three shootings and a terrifying arson attack. Harry O'Brien, who was then aged 16, controlled a graft line and a crew of dealers selling cannabis on the streets, but his lucrative trade was exposed after a feud led to three shootings in as many weeks. One attack saw bullets fired from an Audi at a BMW as the two cars raced through the streets of Liverpool. But on that occasion, a stray bullet flew through the front door of an entirely innocent family's home and landed on their hallway stairs. A gunman on an electric bike peppered another family's living room with bullets and fired into another victim's bedroom. Finally, O'Brien had petrol poured through the letterbox of her mum's home and set ablaze as she and her children ran for their lives. O'Brien brought brutality to the streets of the city between December 2020 and June 2021. Speaking yesterday at the court, the judge, Neil Flewitt QC, said, Unhappily, the lives of wholly innocent people, including young children, were put at risk by the callous and cowardly actions of all those involved. The judge said O'Brien planned and took part in all three shootings, orchestrated the arson, and the cannabis plot was his enterprise. A feud had developed between two families of Franchettis and the Rosarios in Liverpool, which led to the violence. But David Temkin, the prosecuting QC, said Harry O'Brien was at the heart of the criminality in this case. Michael McLean, who was then aged 16, and Aaron Donahue, who was then aged 19, were his lieutenants, giving managerial responsibility over his drugs trade. Daniel Lawler joined O'Brien in carrying out two of the shootings, which all involved the same Glock semi-automatic gun, which has never been recovered by the police. The first shooting took place on December the 29th, 2020, after the unknown occupants of a silver BMW X5 driving around Dingle looking for O'Brien and his gang deliberately rammed into another BM. It was being driven by O'Brien's mum. In the car were her son, McLean Donahue, and an unknown fourth male. She rang police at half ten to report the crash, and her son and his gang fled, and Donahue called Lola, who had previously helped acquire a stolen Audi on false plates. The prosecutor then said what happened next was revenge. Armed with a loaded gun, O'Brien, McLean, Donahue, and the fourth male set off in the Audi. McLean behind the wheel. Three shots were fired at the BMW in Dingle Lane with one piercing the front door of a shot couple and their seven-year-old child's home. The prosecutor said they were in the process of going to bed. They heard screeching car tires and found a bullet on the hallway stairs. The QC said evidence given by Lola at trial revealed O'Brien was in some sort of dispute with the Franchetti and Rosario family. Over the next three weeks, while staying in a hotel in Liverpool, O'Brien managed to acquire an electric bike. O'Brien and Lawler set off on that bike, one armed with a pistol, and fired shots at a home in Dingle. In that incident, three bullets were found embedded in a living room wall and ceiling. Then on January the 20th, just after 1am, O'Brien and Lawler on the same bike targeted another family, and they fired at an upstairs bedroom. The gang next targeted another house in Dingle, where a woman was at home with her three children. Notably, they were all from the Rosario family. And the man that they had beef with, Ian Franchetti, was those children's uncle. The QC said this arson attack was the brainchild of O'Brien, who sought the help of a 14-year-old boy from Toxteth, who cannot be named, and enlisted Shian Kanu, who was then aged 19, who recruited Mohammed Mohammed to carry out the attack. The boy filled a petrol canister at a shell garage on February the 1st. It was taken by Mohammed Mohammed to that home just after 8am in the morning. The prosecutor said the fire spread some way into the property, moving from the hallway to the staircase to the upper floor. The occupants of the house and their dog managed to escape out of the rear of the property. However, they all required medical treatment for smoke inhalation. Then on February the 12th, police raided the home of O'Brien's grandparents who lived next door to him in Liverpool. They found nearly £14,000 in cash in a plastic bag in the loft and one note bore their grandson's fingerprints. O'Brien was also seen with wads of cash at a hotel and a restaurant in Liverpool city centre and he was arrested at his aunt's home where police found some £5,000 of cannabis plus cash, mobile phones, two knives and an axe. Police also raided the home of Nathan Kelly, a customer of O'Brien gang and officers found a revolver loaded with eight bullets in a disused fish tank on the balcony. In a communal garden outside, police discovered a revolver wrapped in a black bin bag covered with soil. Following a spate of arrests, those said to have been involved in the shootings and arson attack were charged with conspiracy to possess a firearm and to commit arson both with intent to endanger life. So in defence, O'Brien's solicitor said he has had ADHD and was described as a risk taker. 
He added, it may well be those illnesses, through no fault of his own, have contributed to this conduct. The judge locked O'Brien up for nine years and eight months, with an extended three years on licence, and he must serve at least two-thirds of that sentence beyond bars before he can apply for parole. You had Lawler was found guilty of the firearm plot and admitted unrelated charges of dangerous driving and handling stolen goods. He was locked up for eight years. McLean from Toxteth, he was locked up for eight and a half years. Donahoe was locked up for six years and four months. The jurors couldn't reach a verdict against Canu on the arson plot. He later admitted participating in the criminal activities of an organised crime group and he was locked up for two years and three months. Also, the 15-year-old boy, he was handed a two-year youth rehabilitation order with a six-month curfew. And Mohammed Mohammed and another person who goes by the name of Kelly will be sentenced at later dates. So guys, that's a story coming from Merseyside. Let me know what you think. It's your boy GT. Keep it locked. Keep it real.